Chinese AI development has been supercharged in the last few months. We've seen them use orders of magnitude less GPU power to train similar or better models to what companies like OpenAI have been able to accomplish. And today we got something absolutely incredible. So today the lab behind DeepSeek which you probably know from their coding models like DeepSeek Coder, have released what they're calling the first compact reasoning AI model to rival OpenAI's Preview 01 model. This model is called DeepSeek R1 Lite Preview, and I want to break down what this model is good at, what it's actually not that great at, and what it means for the future of Chinese AI labs in their competition with the West, specifically Silicon Valley. So welcome to AI Flux, let's get into it. So DeepSeek, which curiously is actually funded by quantitative traders in China, has released a new reasoning model. And these models are distinctly different from common LLMs, even those like DeepSeek Coder, in that they think a little bit longer about the prompts they're given and aim to give more concise results that mimic or are more reminiscent of how humans think, which also makes them easier to interact with. DeepSeek R1 Lite is also a model that's meant to be pretty lightweight, the idea being that you could run this on a few smaller GPUs and that you wouldn't need massive GPUs only available to most of us in data centers to actually make this work. And unlike a lot of other common architectures, these models try to effectively fact check themselves by spending more time considering questions or the query, and this helps them avoid a lot of the pitfalls that we've seen with other models. And it's pretty interesting interacting with this model because this model at times will think for tens of seconds or even minutes before giving you results. So the cadence of interaction is quite different, but at times the results are pretty impressive. DeepSea claims that this new R1 or R1 Lite preview performs on par with OpenAI's O1 preview model on two popular benchmarks specifically, uh, AIME and Math AIME, which uses other AI models to evaluate the model's performance which is kind of interesting given how other models like MMLU have, have failed to really give us a generalist evaluation of a lot of these models. So what does DeepSeek say about this model? So one of the things they really wanted to do was to make the thought process of this model as transparent as possible, while also showing a few benchmarks. So the benchmarks that they show here are pretty interesting. And it's clear that DeepSeek R1 is absolutely dominant in a number of these benchmarks. The key is these are not looking at benchmarks like MMLU. These are looking at application-specific benchmarks like Code Forces, Live Code Bench, and Zebra Logic. And I will say I was surprised how bad at certain logic problems this model was, given that in theory, the entire purpose of this model was to actually reason more effectively and more concisely. Another thing that's quite interesting with small models like this, even when they're not tiny, is the new emerging laws of inference scaling. So basically how much you can get with a given number of tokens relative to accuracy with any of these models, specifically looking at the first pass. So what's interesting with DeepSeek R1 is with longer reasoning, it's actually performing far better than existing models. And the number of thoughts per tokens on a problem is a little bit all over the place, but it explains why it's better at certain math problems and might falter with other pretty rudimentary uh, logic problems like playing tic-tac-toe. So I wanna hop into their current interface to use with this. It's cool, you can actually use this model, but to actually use DeepThink, uh, you actually only get 50 messages to use of this since it's much more intensive. I should also mention that this is likely trained on some portion of around 10,000 NVIDIA A1 GPUs. That's the backer of DeepSeek AI, High Flyer Capital Management, which again is a Chinese quant fund, bought for about a billion yen this past year. So they're not able to buy the latest GPUs, but they're again, still achieving immensely impressive things. And what's funny is when I was reading about this and doing some research, it's funny that there is another Chinese company called O1 AI, which is totally different. That is not uh, where the O1 preview model came from. The O1 preview model came from OpenAI, just to clear that up if anyone was confused. So let's try something basic. Um, like I would like to move from the state of Oregon to Utah. And what routes should I think about using? So this is geographically relevant, but there are also a number of other things this model could potentially think of. Now, what's interesting is actually just how long this model tries to think. And what I like about this interface and how different it is, is it actually shows you its thought process behind what it's actually answering. So what I found is you can actually get pretty good geographic data out of this model. So you can see here that in terms of time or year, it's saying uh, avoid summer and avoid winter, spring or fall is best. It 
clearly has some knowledge of routes or kind of large highways in America because it gave us um, I-84, which is a pretty good option. It gave us an option of a scenic route that would uh, add some time, but also maybe make it more appealing. In terms of cost saving tips, the tips are pretty basic, but I thought this was relatively impressive. Now, in terms of coding, there are uh, some pitfalls with this model, I would say. So if I was to ask this model, let's think through how I could potentially, for my startup that makes camera enabled bird feeder. So the idea here is there are a lot of different options. The, I, the reason you would use a model like this in terms of coding is in my opinion, way more for architecture than really using it just to give you code to use. So let's see what this model gives us. So it's showing us kind of what it's thinking through. It's looking at what cloud we're on, which is pretty interesting. When it comes to creating a time-lapse, um, it's probably gonna mention that we're using FFmpeg Cure somewhere, but let's see. So we have data collection. It's thinking about where we're, where we're going to store these and kind of what APIs we can use. There's data ingestion. So actually how we move that to where the compute happens to make them. And great, we have sorting, we have encoding. What's incredible here is it picked up FFmpeg and some wrappers for these libraries, which is pretty cool. And it mentions optimization last, which is maybe simple to people who aren't uh, developers, but basically one rule of development is you never over optimize too early. And then they mention storage and delivery, which is also quite interesting. Uh, the interface is kind of not as important, but it gives us obviously the options here. And then um, what's cool with this model is it's concluding thoughts are really good. I'm not exactly sure why, but basically this is giving us options of how to scale and maybe work to improve it after we have a minimum viable product. Uh, it's not forcing code down our throat at any point here. And it's even thinking about things like monitoring and logging, which is the most boring, but in some ways the most important aspect of this. And it's really picking up on a lot of important areas that even some developers would maybe not initially think. Obviously with enough time, they would realize, oh, it costs too much, I have to go optimize that or, oh, it's, you know, this works great, but maybe it's not as secure. And what's really cool with this model is it's able to linearly think carefully without lacking context at any one step of thinking or any like epoch of thinking. And obviously a lot of these models don't think nearly as long as a lot of agentic frameworks, but it's really cool to see a model that in theory you could just run on your own hardware that is this good. It's one thing that in open source AI we did not have for a considerable amount of time until now. And another crazy thing uh, with the progress of these models is that uh, DeepSeek is now well known enough and uh, competitive enough with other models like Cloud 3.5 and OpenAI's uh, GPT-4 Omni that it's actually the new default coding model on Hugging Face, which is incredibly cool. So I'm curious what you guys think. Are you a big fan of DeepSeek? Do you like DeepSeek more than Cloud 3.5? Do you think um, reasoning models are actually an interesting kind of new step forward? Or do you think they're still just kind of a curious experimental thing that maybe would not be that useful, but might be useful in terms of pushing things forward in terms of agentic AI workflows? Let me know in the comments below. I apologize for kind of taking some time off. Uh, I just uh, sold one of my companies and it unfortunately took a lot of my time, but I'm really eager to get back to making these videos because things are getting really, really exciting. So as always, I hope you learned something from this video. If you like our content, please like, subscribe, and share, and we'll see you in the next one.